Hi everybody. It is good to be back. It is Saturday, March. Oh, I forgot what the date is. Doesn't really matter, but um, we are here for the next video in our Learn to Knit Socks live video series with Meanwhile at the Castle. And this is video number four, as you can see, where, where we will be learning to knit the toe of our sock using Magic Loop. I'm going to show you what part that is of our sock. So the last time we were here, we knit the heel turn right here, the gusset, the gusset decreases and we talked about how to measure your foot so that you know how long to knit your foot. The last part, actually this is the second to last part that we are doing, we are going to be learning to knit the toe decreases right here. Hi Cornwall Crafter, thank you for joining us. I'm going to show you what part of the sock that looks like off of the sock blocker. Let's get this laid flat. Hopefully everybody had time to get their feet, the foot of your sock knit, so that you're ready to start the toe. Okay, so we're looking at the bottom of the foot right here. And Emily's here. She has a meeting in a minute, so it's good to have Emily with us. All right, so we're looking at the bottom of the foot and we are going to be knitting the toe right here the toe decreases and we are doing a uh, traditional standard wedge toe now if you have been following along and you were on our website we talked about a sock pattern that we were following for this tutorial um, we actually haven't even been referring to it because as we looked at it closer it just wasn't quite right and so we've just been showing you how to do it but surprise we have found the perfect sock pattern. Actually, I was thinking I'm going to just have to write one up, but I should have known to just go to Susan B. Anderson's website because there she has her pattern is exactly how we knit our socks. Where do you measure when deciding to put in the toe? All right, I'll show you that again here. <clears throat> First of all, I'm glad to be here because it means that I'm not horribly sick like the rest of my family. They all have the flu. All right, so on the website, meanwhileatthecastle.com, we have this chart here. And we went over this at, in the first video where we talked about measuring your foot. And so we talked about the total foot length and your toe length. So here's the foot length and toe length. So my foot length was nine and three quarter inches and my toe length was one and a half. So we would subtract one and a half inches from nine and three quarters and then subtract one half inch more um, for that little bit of negative ease. We talked about negative ease and how it's important to have it not just in the width around your foot but also in length here so that your foot stays snug. So, thank you. My family's getting better. Thank you, Cornwall Crafter. I'd love to know everybody's actual names, but we just go by what we see on, on our videos here. Um, so, on my sock here, I will show you. Oh, Eve. All right, Eve is Cornwall Crafter. Thank you, Eve. So nine and three quarters minus one and a half is eight and a quarter. And then I subtract half an inch more and that would be seven and three quarters inch. I'm trying to remember if that's what I did on this sock here. My daughter actually knit half of this sock. So we're going to measure from the back of the heel. I have it laying flat, the back of the heel. And we've got a visitor in, it's my husband. All right, and then if I follow on the side, I'm going to try and show you what I did on the side of this sock. My decreases start at about this green stripe. And if I follow that around, that's about seven and three quarters inches. And I believe that's what I said on here. Let's see. A, yep, seven and three quarter inches. 
So really what it is, is it's two inches from the end of your toe. So, did that make sense? I hope that answered your question on how to know where to place your, your toe. So the other thing that I suggest doing is when you have your sock ready to do the toe, slide your stitches onto the needle, onto the cable part of the needle where it's flexible, and you can try your sock on. And you can put your sock on and your toes will peek out and you want to have it end right about where your toes are here or just a little bit before, okay? It depends on how you like it to feel. Would you stand on your tape measure? Um, I actually do stand on my tape measure. That was a question that we just had. I lay my tape measure out and put my heel at the zero so I can see where my toe ends up and that's how I measure my foot. If you're standing on it, your foot flares out a little bit more because you have more weight on it and that will give you a more accurate measurement. The nice thing is that if you were to knit your sock and you find it's just a little too big or it's a little too tight, you only have to undo a little bit of your sock and redo it. You know, you only have this much to undo. And so it's not a huge sacrifice, I feel like. Um, I think that it's really important to get your socks to fit really well so that you can enjoy using them. You go to so much effort and so much time in knitting them, you want them to fit well. So take a little bit of time and get it down right, and then you'll have a great formula to use in the future. Okay, so let's talk about doing the toe. We were talking about having a pattern to follow. If you go to meanwhileatthecastle.com, we have updated the pattern that you can download and print. It is by Susan B. Anderson called How I Knit My Socks. It is a free pattern on her website and we have linked to it there. And I'm just thankful that she has written it out and that we knit our socks exactly the same. Um, I want to ask a question really quick. I'd like to get some feedback for later. Who would be interested in learning how to add a contrasting color for your toe? Some people may not really care that much about it or already know how to change yarns. If you're interested, leave a comment so that I can address that. But this is the sock that I'm working on and you'll notice I've changed yarns because the sock I was working on initially, it was a two ply and it was a little bit more springy and so it stretched a little bit more than I wanted. And so I pulled that out and I just haven't had a chance to re-knit it back to where we were in time. Please forgive the sniffling. Okay. Okay, we've got a couple of people that said yes, they'd like to know how to do contrasting color. So I will show you that in a little bit. I'm just going to get started on doing our decreases. You've already learned how to do decreases in the last video. We talked about knitting two together and doing an SSK. I'm going to get out my stitch markers to show you what we are doing here. Oh, you know what? This won't work. These aren't these aren't ones that I can clip on. I could do it a little different. I'm not going to worry about that because this is a very simple, very simple um, pattern to remember. It's two rows. So the very first row you're going to do is uh, you pull out your back needle and you have them um, just on two needles flat so that the sides are parallel with the sides of your heel because when we were knitting last time, we ended up having it the other direction. So make sure your needles are adjusted this way. And we are going to start and end each needle with a knit one. So if you remember that, start and end each needle with a knit one, you'll have this down. So the very first needle, one thing I'm going to do, I just remembered, I like to put a progress keeper on one side so that I remember once I've done a full round. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, so knit one, and then we are going to do the next two stitches are going to be an SSK, where you slip one as if to knit, slip the second one as if to knit, slide it back on your needle, and knit it through the back loop. That's an SSK. 
that just knit two together so that we decreased by one stitch and it made your stitch slant this direction. So it's slanting towards the left. And then we're going to knit across until we get to the last three stitches on our needle. Okay, we have the last three stitches on the needle. And now we are going to knit two together, which creates a right leaning decrease. You can see this stitch is angled this direction. And then we're going to knit the last stitch. So we talked about the first and last stitch of every needle we'd knit. All right, we're going to turn and we're gonna do the same thing. This is a very, very, very simple uh, part of your sock. It just flies by. The hardest part is remembering, are you, am I on row one or row two? Okay, we're gonna knit the first stitch. We're gonna SSK, slip as if knit, slip as if to knit. Knit through the back loop. Knit them together through the back loop. Knit across. And then the last three stitches we're going to do are knit two together. Okay, we're on the last three stitches. So these two are going to knit two together. And knit the last stitch. Okay, that's row one. Row two, we simply knit. We just knit all the way around, knit all stitches. We don't want to decrease every single row because it will make a very short toe. Now, if your feet and your toes are quite um, square at the top, that might be a good fit for you. But you'll have to know that it takes a little less. Uh, what am I trying to say? It's not as deep. So you may need to knit a little bit longer before you do your toe decreases. But this is the very traditional wedge toe. Now the reason I added a progress keeper on the side of my sock is because when I'm not paying close attention, I'll knit across one needle and think, wait, did I just do two or did I do one? And I can't remember and I get mixed up and I start decreasing um, on a round when I should be knitting or uh, vice versa. And so I know that I need to continue doing whatever pattern I'm doing until I get to that, that marker, to the side with the marker. So it makes it so I don't have to think about it quite so much because I really like to knit socks when I'm watching TV or visiting with friends. So I don't want to have to be thinking a ton about my knitting. I want to just uh, enjoy whatever I'm doing with people. Okay, I'm going to show you the decreases again. Um, I always fumble with the SSK because I typically do mine a little differently and I showed it to you last time. I'll show it to you again here because I can do those pretty quick the way I'm used to, but I kind of get mixed up trying to remember the regular way of doing it. Okay, so I got to my marker again. Oh, and Sue is here from Alabama. Let's see if we have our other Sue here from, I think Alabama, I can't remember for sure last time. Okay, we're gonna do our decrease again. So the first stitch we always knit, 
then we do our SSK and if you remember last time how I showed you we go in through the front of the first stitch and the back of the second stitch wrap the yarn come back out the way we came oh, I split my yarn I slide off the first stitch and kind of snug on both sides and let the second stitch off okay I'm gonna knit across that's how I do my SSK because it's just a little bit neater and I saw that online on a video or post somewhere called um, a neater way to SSK. And at the end of this row, remember the last three stitches, we are going to knit two together and then knit one. knit two together, knit one. Okay, I'm going to turn it around. We're going to do our left leaning decrease, which is the SSK. And then, oh, then we're going to knit across to the last three stitches and knit two together, knit one. Now if you struggle to remember this pattern you can write it down or you can go to the website like I mentioned meanwhile at the castle.com where we have the pattern linked to where you can um, download it, print it out, read it. Okay, knit two together Oh, I keep splitting this yarn. Knit two together, knit one. Okay, so I just finished row one again, and that means the next row is going to be all knit. I just get my needles readjusted. While I knit this row, I'm going to tell you um, how you kind of finish this toe before we get to the Kitchener stitch. The Kitchener stitch will be next video. Don't panic, don't panic, it will be okay, I promise. All right, so we continue these decreases, um, just knitting row one and row two, and I end with uh, row two, until we have 12 stitches on both needles. So we'll have 24 stitches total. It doesn't matter what size of sock you have, if you have a 72 stitch sock, if you have a 64 stitch sock, um, I typically end with 12 stitches. Now if you have a 72 stitch sock and you are knitting and doing your decreases until you have 12 stitches, your toe will be slightly longer. Um, so you may want to make sure you start your toe decreases slightly earlier or you could end it with 14 stitches or more it's just that's the typical number that I usually end with do we have any questions on this so far I think we have a lot of knitters on here who have knit plenty before, but we do have some new knitters. So I think I'm going to take just a second and show you how to go back a couple of stitches if you make a mistake in your knitting. Uh, this is something that I didn't know how to do at the beginning and I kept going to my sister, help me, please help me. So uh, if you look at the side of your stitching, and these are all knit stitches, so we will um, do this the same all the way across. If you have a purl stitch, it's slightly different. So I will just show you the knit stitch. I'm going to go in to my stitch here and slide it off and just tug with my finger here and it pulls it onto this needle. I look at the stitch below what's on here, go in like this, tug it off. And as your yarn gets longer, you can kind of just wrap it around keep going like that 
Now, if you need to go back quite a ways, that's a little different. I usually pick up the row of stitches, kind of like if you were to do a an afterthought heel, I'll go through and pick up the right leg of every stitch across on both sides like this and then I will take out my other needle and I'll just pull the yarn out and then this will help keep it by the time I get down to there it'll just have my needles or my stitches on the needle as I need it to be and I don't have to go pick up any stitches any tips for picking up stitches in a straight line? I'm trying to understand if that's kind of what I was just telling you about. Like if you need to rip back, is that your question? If you need to go back quite a bit? I'm going to guess that's what it was. I'll show, I'll show you that right here. So, I'm going to take this off. Before I do that, I'm going to show you what we have here. Yes, I end up with stitches from different rows. Okay, I'll show you that here. Before I pull back, I want you to look at the decreases that we have happening because once I rip out, we won't have that here. We have our SSKs. You can see we've decreased right here. We knit a row and decreased here, and we've knit a row. Can you see that? Let's. Let's look at that a little closer. Decrease, knit, knit a row. Decrease, knit. And on this side, the knit two together are always a little bit neater. So we've got our knit two together, knit a row, knit two together, knit a row. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to show you how to pick these up. So if you make a mistake and you find out, oh, I just have to go back really far and you don't want to tink back, you know, one stitch at a time, we're gonna do this. Don't panic, it'll all be okay, I promise. So I want to start um, down before I started my decreases. So I'm going to, I like to kind of pull my stitches apart so that I can see where my stitches are and I can see I have a stitch right here because it makes a loop and connects here. I'm going to follow around to the side. I'm going to pick up, sorry, I'm going to pick up the right leg. Here's the V's, a V from each stitch. And I'm going to pick up the right leg. I'm going to continue that around. Now if you want it to be in a straight line, you're going to look, I'm trying to look through the camera and do this at the same time. You want to kind of look across. This is the next stitch, okay? I need the right leg. And my needle's going across. There's the next stitch. I need the right leg. Now, one thing you've got to be careful of is not splitting your stitches. And this yarn, it's a by Dragon Horde Yarn, and it's a Captain Jack Sparrow yarn kit, which is really fabulous on her fluffy sock bake base. Because it's so fluffy, um, I do tend to split it a little bit, especially because I like to use really sharp needles. I'm not using Haya Haya Sharps. Those are just a little too sharp for me. Okay. So I'm going across. I'm going to kind of pick up the speed here so that I can finish this so I can show you the other side. I hope this is answering your question, showing you what you were wanting to know. The problem is sometimes when you get to the other side, are you on the right row? It's always on the end that I struggle with. So I need to skip that, pick up the right leg. Okay, I need to count. You did it! Yay, I did it! Cornwall Crafter. Okay, so did you just have to rip back a row? And you did it successfully? One, two, three, four.
31, 31, having to rip out toes. Socks are too short. Ah, oh, so you finished and your socks were too short. Okay, so I actually needed to start one stitch earlier. So I will just pick that up on the other side and move it around. Have to cut off the ribbing too because it's too loose. Well, hold on before you cut off your ribbing. So hold on for a minute. Okay, oh, I'm doing this wrong. So I picked those up. I'm going to actually turn it around this direction and use this needle to pick up the next stitches. Okay, now right here was the stitch that we were working on, so I need to pick up the next stitch over. And let's keep going. I kind of undid some of these. Now this one is going up into the decreases. That row, I actually need the next row down. Do I? I'm going to do this one and then we'll see from there. I can't get that one underneath in those decreases. Oh, I got it. I got it. What I wanted to show you is what happens when you um, get all of these picked up and how you can rip back and what it does to your stitches instead of instead of just pulling back and then having to pick them up afterwards like this because to, to me this is fiddly and that's really stresses me out and is frustrating to me um, picking them up because I always end up with them twisted and I have to reseat them properly on my needles and um, sometimes I drop a stitch so I don't enjoy doing that to me that's stressful this is much easier to me except for the fact that I pulled some of this out. That's okay. I'm trying to look at it through the camera and that makes it a little bit tricky. And then when I don't look in the camera, I go off screen <laughs> and then you can't see what's happening. So I'm doing my best here. Okay. We're close. We're going to, we're gonna say that that's good for now. We need a GoPro, oh, that would be nice. Yes, we do need a GoPro if we carry on. Okay, I'm gonna pull, and what's gonna happen is it's going to stop once we get to these lives, or once we finish, and yep, you can see, I did go down, I thought I went down a row on here where it stops where I picked up says, I must read my knitting wrong. That looks like the left leg to me. No wonder I always get twisted stitches. Yep. So um, I actually did go down a row. So what I will do is I will just slide my stitches over onto this needle and then I will readjust here, but it'll, it's much easier to do it that way. So to know which leg you're picking up, whether it's the right leg or the left leg, Let's see if I can do it with two hands. I kind of want this spread apart to show you. You can see how the yarn starts here, goes behind, comes back down here. Then it feeds underneath, comes up here, back around. We want where it comes up. This is the right leg right here. This is the left leg. We're going to skip that, get the right leg, skip that get the right leg. Does that make sense that that's the right leg? Can you see that? So you can see here's the column of stitches, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Is this the column of stitches? That's why I like to spread it apart where I can see how the yarn is feeding through the other stitches. Okay, hopefully that helps you. Um, I will work on this a little bit later in getting these decreases done for our next video. Um, let's, let's talk about your cuff really quickly. You were saying that your cuff is way too loose. So 
you can um, do a couple of things. You can take some elastic thread. I'm trying to think if I have some. I do have some. You can take some elastic thread and you can actually use a darning needle and weave it through your stitches to help tighten that up a little bit, okay? Um, if you cut off your sock, you're going to want to pick up stitches um, like we did here, pick up stitches, cut that off, and then you're going to be knitting from the bottom up, and then you will need to do a um, cast off that's loose enough that it lets it come over your heel but sometimes what happens is that'll flare out quite a bit and might be too loose to help hold it up if you're already having a problem with it being loose because um, it has to stretch over your heel but then you want it to still be tight enough to hold it up so I would try this trick first okay um, if that doesn't work then yes cut your cut your um, knitting after you pick up some stitches and work your way up. Okay, I'm gonna show you contrasting color. This is pretty simple here. I don't do anything fancy. I don't weave in my ends as I go. Um, you can, but I'm not. This yarn, oh, this is my Christmas Eve cast on, and this yarn is by Little Taylor S and on Instagram and on Etsy. And I need my scissors. And I am ready to put in, am I ready to put this in? All of a sudden I can't remember if I knit it long enough. Let's find out. Oh. Okay. This is actually just a little bit short, but I'm gonna put it in without cutting my yarn here so that I can come back to it. So I'm gonna tuck it down in there actually so that it doesn't get in the way since I'm not cutting it yet. So I typically would just cut my yarn that I was working with and take the tail of the new yarn and I would tuck it down in Use the Russian lace bind off. I use the same size needles, so the ribbing, I was going to go down a needle size. Um, that was what one of our viewers said, where her sock was a little too loose on the cuff. Okay. Okay, so to start knitting, you just start knitting. Okay? I just want to make sure that I keep, keep the contrast color pulled tight down here so it doesn't slip when I start knitting. And then I can let go now that I've got it and it's just fine. These two stitches will end up being really loose for a little bit, but that's okay. That doesn't really matter. Now, if you're going to do a contrast color, I suggest that you knit um, like two, two plain rows before you start doing your decreases. Uh, that way you can get your yarn secured because if you're trying to do decreases on these really loose stitches, that can be frustrating. So I'm gonna go around, and the second time you go around, it will tighten up a bit, and then it's much easier to knit. Let's get some more slack here. You know what, I think I'm gonna just knit a few more rounds in this color until it's the length that I want because I kind of like having a deeper contrast on the toe. I think it looks nice. So I can cut my yarn, my main color. Okay, so when we get around to the other side, Sometimes what I will do is I will actually take the tail end of the two yarns and I will just tie them in a bow and tuck them inside. 
How much contrast color do you normally use? Would a five gram mini be enough or 10 gram be better? That was a question that we had from Eve. Are you talking about for cuffs, heels, and toes or just the toe? Okay, so right here, because I decided I am going to cut this yarn, I'll show you. I actually just come right here and I tie cuffs, heels, and toes. Okay, just a minute. I tie a little bow here just to help keep it tight enough as I'm knitting and I just tuck it down in. You don't have to do that, but I do that. Okay, and now when I go around, it'll be a lot easier to continue knitting. And I would do one more row of this color before you start doing your decreases. Okay, I measured one time how much yarn it takes for me to do my toe, and it was two and a half grams. Is that right? Yes, I believe it was two and a half grams for the toe. Um, the cuff, it depends on how long you knit it, um, but I did a pair of socks for my husband recently, and I only did a 68 stitch count sock, and it took 22 grams to do cuffs, heels, and toes in his sock. And I did 20 rows on the cuff, I believe. Um, so it really depends on how many stitches you're casting on, how long you're doing your cuff, how long you're doing your toe. But that's what it took for me. So... To be on the safe side, um, I think that with a 20 gram mini, you'll want to do just your cuffs and your toes, or just your heels and your toes, or like I'm doing, I have two different colors. I have this berry color and this mint green that I am using, So, and I have two 20 gram minis, so I will have plenty. Uh, there's no need to do contrasting. It just looks really fun. Okay, so I'm going to get around and show you the beginning now. Okay. So this is still pretty loose, not as loose as if I had not tied the bow, but it will be tight enough for me to start doing my decreases. And then when I go back and I weave in my ends, I will untie the bow. Let me get this pulled out. I will untie the bow and you can see that my cream colored, my main body uh, yarn color is coming from this side. I will weave it in going the other direction to tighten that up and this mint green one is coming the opposite direction. I will weave it in that way and that will tighten that up so that it will be nice and smooth right here. Okay so that's how I add in a contrasting color for the toe here. So like I said you just continue doing your decreases until you have 12 stitches left on your needle and then we will come back to do the Kitchener stitch. There's no need to be afraid of the Kitchener stitch. I actually really enjoy doing it. And so I will show you how I do mine and I will show it to you in two different ways on this one on this sock and one on the other sock so that you can um, compare and contrast and choose what you like. So, uh, I'm going to give you just a minute if you have any questions to ask while I share our hashtag. If you knit a pair of socks um, using these tutorials, I would love if you go on social media and tag, uh, use the hashtag MyFirstSocksCal. Uh, tag myself uh, in the video. I am Indigo Chicken Dolls on Instagram. And you can go to our Ravelry group on Ravelry. Our group is Meanwhile at the Castle. And we have a thread in there where you can share your progress. And would love for you to share your progress, ask questions, and cheer other people on because um, 
we just want to encourage everybody. Our next video is going to be, and this is actually the last video um, in the series. Emily is doing the fourth video on DPNs on March 12th in the morning, and on March 12th in the evening, I am doing the finishing where I show you the Kitchener stitch, weaving in your ends, and we'll talk a little bit about blocking versus non-blocking. Um, also another note is that the time changes here where I live tonight, and so uh, that may factor in for some of you. If I, I'm not sure in other parts of the world if you have daylight savings time or not. I know some places don't. So you just want to make sure to check the time on that if you're going to be joining in our live video and make sure that you are with us on March 12th at 7 p.m. for our last video. That gives you two days to finish your toe. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I have really had a good time with this and I appreciate all of your comments that you have. And if this has been helpful to you, please uh, give a thumbs up down below and subscribe if you aren't already. I appreciate it. And Kathy says, this is so great. You and Emily came up with a great idea. I've learned so much, even though I've knit socks before. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm so glad that it's been helpful to you and we hope that it helps lots of other people. Okay, have a good evening.